Welcome to episode 104, that's officially two years, of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today I got a message. Just don't quit. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. What's up? The moment of clarity for this week is that belonging is not the same thing as fitting in. I talk about this later in the podcast, but wanna make sure you don't miss it. Belonging is when you wanna be somewhere and the other people want you there too. Fitting in is when you do things like dress the same, listen to the same music, talk the same way as a group of people so that you can look like them, but in the end, they don't really want you there. Don't fit in, fight to find belonging. That's the moment of clarity for this week. I'm so excited for what he's gonna show me. Hurry up and show me Paul's pick. Okay, my pick for this week are brands that use the brand equity they built up to do something completely different. I'm gonna show you what I mean. This week, Atari, Atari, yeah, the video game system announced that they were going to build a theme hotel. What the heck does Atari know about hospitality? Guess what? They don't need to, why? They'll learn that. What they've done is build a brand that people trust. Here, let me show you. There it is. Picture of the Atari Hotel, it's pretty awesome. When you have brand equity and you build up trust, guess what? You can use that equity and spend it any way you want. And in a market, and in a day and age when consumer sentiment changes so quick, I can't think of a better investment that any business can make but building their brand equity. So I'm really fired up about this week. Um, I've put more time into prepping this episode than I have um, in, in a while, and I think it's because the message and the thing that, that hit me this week was around the topic of quitting and why people quit things in general. I've been reading more than typical, and uh, so that always gets my wheels going. And so today I'm going to talk about quitting and when you should quit and when you shouldn't quit and what it means to quit and how to get over the demotivation that comes with the thing, the thinking that, oh, do I feel like quitting? And I think some real tangible solutions and how I've overcome that feeling myself. I've had it a lot. And um, I bet at some point in your life, you have felt like quitting something, a job, a relationship, a project. So I went to the masses. I went to my social media channels, the masses. Yeah, it's very contextual. Um, went, went to Instagram and LinkedIn and I posed the question, why, in your opinion, why do people quit? Just really blanket. I wanted to see what people said and, and really get a good feel. I got a lot of responses. And I'm going to read some of them for you right now. So here are some of the responses from probably some of you that are even listening to this. So I'm going to read about a dozen of them. Um, bored or unfulfilled. Fear, right? That's why people quit. I'm afraid. Happens. Uh, there's no patience these days is another answer. Here's a really specific one. It took me 13 years to become a college football official. Not a big enough why. That means people don't understand why they're doing it. So they quit that reason. People quit because they're afraid to lose the security of a monthly income. That might be a reason that someone would, would be afraid to quit a job to start their own business, perhaps. Uh, people want instant results. That led me to the next point was like, is quitting ever a good idea? Because sometimes, like, maybe we should quit. When do we know how to quit? When do we know when it's okay to quit? When it's not okay to quit? And so that kind of brought me to my next thought on this. And this is a book. I'm going to hold it up. It's Leadership Leadership Strategy and Tactics. It's a new book by somebody that you've heard me mention on the show here before, Jocko Willink, former Navy SEAL. And this is a really practical leadership book. Um, a lot of wisdom in here and a lot of really bite-sized stuff. So you can read for just a few minutes and walk away with something. And there's a section in here called When to quit. And I'm going to read a passage. This is on page 246 of the book. Jocko says, one of the mantras in the SEAL teams is never quit. That is one of the main refrains utilized during basic SEAL training. And it makes a lot of sense during training because that is how you make it through. You don't quit. So no matter what training evolution comes along, no matter how hard, no matter how tired, frustrated, exhausted, or otherwise broken you are, you don't quit. And that's how you make it through the training. And that's how you eventually become a SEAL. Here's the interesting thing. When you, when you get the actual, to the actual SEAL teams, 
that extreme attitude has to be adjusted and modulated because if it isn't, it can lead to disaster. So he goes on and he talks about a young SEAL leader who has now made it on the SEALs by not quitting. And at this point, he is now starting to lead teams through training, through exercises. And uh, Jocko goes on to explain a situation where they had him lead a platoon, a unit of SEALs into the into a building. And the objective was to clear the building. And in order to do that, they had to make it through this one strategic hallway. Now, knowingly, you know, Jocko, the instructor, booby trapped the hallway and put a shooter at the end of the hallway with a paintball gun, really bunkered in there so you couldn't get to him. And as people would come around the hallway, two Marine or two SEALs would go around to clear the hallway and the shooter at the end of the hallway would light them up with paintball guns. They would have to fall to the ground. And the young leader kept saying, two more. Two more guys went in. They both got lit up. Now they're down. Two more. The next two come in. Two more. He's just going through his team, not quitting. And then finally, he makes the decision, well, I'm the only one left. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go around this corner and attack the position. And of course, you know what happens. He gets lit up with the paintballs. He's done. What Jocko, the lesson he's trying to teach him is that quitting, never quitting, doesn't mean doing the same thing tactically over and over. And that really led to a different approach where they went through a window instead of down the hallway so they didn't get mowed down by the, you know, the fake shooter with the paintball gun. And he really makes a great uh, differentiation in the book. And that's the difference between tactical quitting versus strategic quitting. And let me, let me break it down. So tactical quitting, it means you're trying one tactic, one thing that is part of an overall strategy as part of an overall objective. And a lot of times, if a strategy isn't or a tactic isn't working, you have to quit it or you're going to die or you're going to surely fail. And so there's this difference between tactical quitting and strategic quitting and tactical objectives versus strategic objectives that I think bringing that back to this conversation about should you quit? Is it the right time to quit? When it is, is it okay to quit? And so... Thinking of that story of the young SEAL that thought quitting was a bad thing and tactically kept running his team to a certain doom versus strategic quitting and understanding what the main objective is and why you wouldn't quit. So bringing that back to kind of real life, well, that is real life, but bringing it back to our lives here in this podcast, what's the tension? What's the trial? What are you thinking of quitting? What have you thought of quitting? And whether or not, like knowing whether or not how do you know whether or not that's the right decision? Because I think when when I think about quitting, I think of failure. But sometimes stopping going down the path that you were going down, backing up to the last fork in the road and going the other direction, well, in that case, quitting that path and going back is actually the only way forward. Just don't quit. And I mean, don't quit the macro. Don't quit the strategy. Don't give up. Business is hard. Life is hard. Relationship is hard but it's valuable and it's worth it. But I hope that no one listening to the show is going to quit. If you think you're going to quit, maybe stop doing something if it's not in line with the strategy, but don't quit the strategy. Dig in, write out the meaning, do your three-year vision. Man, it takes so much more energy and effort to start something new than it does to cultivate and guide what you already have. Don't go plant another garden somewhere. Cultivate the one you have. Because I'll bet in most situations, it's worth it. Um, And that's it. So I don't know, uh, next week, I'm actually going to be at the NADA show in Las Vegas. So if you're in the automotive industry, it's the biggest show of the year. I will be there. Um, I'll be walking around. I look just like this all the time. I'm going to have this hat on. I'm going to have this beard on. And I would love to meet you in person. Please come say hi if you see me. Aside from that, um, I just wish you a week full of clarity. I wish you a week full of understanding where you're going, understanding what it is to arrange a sh- quit a tactic and not ever, ever, ever quit on what you believe in. Thank you so much for being part of the community. Episode 104 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. I will see you next week. Yeah. Yeah.